This is a video on the Vitrec V76 HiPot scanner system. This unit has AC, DC, insulation resistance all on the high voltage side, plus continuity testing. It also has an 8 channel scanner on the back of the unit, and this is a video on how to connect up and configure a, a test for a two wire cable doing both high pot insulation resistance and continuity tests. First looking at the back of the machine, you'll see that it has three rows of connectors. They're numbered 1 through 8 on this side and 9 through 16 on the other side. The first row of connectors is the high pot connector or high voltage connector. The next one over would be the continuity plus. Now these two banks share the same number 1 through 8 and the software internally allows you to choose one or the other but not both at the same time to help protect the machine. The third bank numbered 9 through 16 is the return or the continuity minus and that will be configured according to the number that's on the side of it. Now with the wires connected, we've connected a Y plug to the high pot and continuity and you can short these right across here and run a single wire but for the purposes of demonstration we're running a dual wire. This will go down to, in this case, the R1 cable of the customers. This is position number one or switch number one and the other side would be to number two connector that would be over here number two and that runs over to the B1 cable of the customers uh, test cable here. On the return side we have number nine which is connected to the R2 on the customers cable and that would be number nine up here and then this one is the B2 cable on the customers uh, test cable and that would be number 10 on the connector here. This will allow us to run several different types of tests all at once in a sequence and test this cable very quickly. Now to set up these steps we're going to use a sequence number two and we already have this programmed in but we're going to go through the different setup parameters. We're going to edit steps and the first step is going to be a switch step. Now I always want to run a switch step first so that the test knows where it's supposed to go and then run the test itself and it will connect it to the proper connections. In this case we're running a continuity test and we're going between continuity on pin 1 to the continuity minus on pin 9. To change the type of subtype you press the subtype button here and you can have either isolate high voltage test or continuity test. In this case we're going to have a continuity test and we're going to be between switch number one and switch number nine. Now you notice that there are some numbers down here. These are the numbers of the switches here and so more would be over here this way and we want number nine. So between one and nine a continuity test. The next step is going to be a continuity test itself. Two seconds would be the dwell. In this case it's a one ohm maximum and zero would be zero ohms which would be the low end. So anything between zero and one ohm will pass. The next step will be another continuity test in this case between two and ten. Next step would be to run that test, the same test as before, only on different connections. The next step is going to be a switch step. In this case we're going to run a high voltage test and we're going to run that high voltage test between number 1 and the return on number 10. So we'll check the leakage between those two wires that we're testing on this cable. The next step is going to be a, uh, to do the test itself which is an ACW test. 500 volts isolated, one second ramp, and a two second dwell in this case 
and we're going to check it for five milli ohms, uh, excuse me, five milliamps or less. The next test, oops, I hit it twice, back up, would be a switch step between one and ten. And we're going to do an IR test on this one, which is a type of a high voltage test. And then the next step would be to run that test, which is an IR at 500 volts. Again, isolated, a two second ramp, a zero delay on taking readings on that. And it would be anything uh, below 100 me uh, mega ohms would indicate that there's a problem. And so we're looking for something higher than that. The next step would be to run the switch step between number two and number nine. And then the next step would be to run that test, which would be another IR test with the same parameters. When you're finished, you press the save return button and that saves the test. And then we can run this test and we'll see that the continuity is uh, about a tenth of an ohm. And then we're running the ACW, the IR, and then the second IR. Once you're finished with that test, you can hit the show details button and that will go through the different tests. Now it won't show the switch steps, but in this case it shows the tests themselves. This is number two of ten, which is the continuity test. The next step would be the next continuity test, which is again here less than about a tenth or about a tenth or no, less than one ohm. Uh, the next step would be the ACW test, which we're having a leakage of 17 microamps, which is basically nothing. Uh, the IR test, 9 giga ohms, would be basically open. And same thing with this one, 8.4, still way high in the range of this unit, so it would re read that it's open. That concludes the setup of a five-step sequence on a dual cable on the Vitrek V76 tester.